Hey guys, King Gath here, and in this guide, I'm going to walk you through the basics of assaults. Now, assaults are your primary mechanism for taking additional territory for your faction. So the main way you can do it outside of that is by placing down war planners' desks in empty settlements. But if you want vassals as well, your only option is through the assault system. You can also use the assault system to get outposts, and that is the way I recommend it. It's way more fun than just going in there and killing everyone by yourself. So the basics of an assault are for you to gather up a band of your soldiers and go wipe wipe out everybody at the settlement. And to set this up, to trigger this, you're gonna go up to your war planner's desk and activate the raid board. Now it might be called something different if you're using a faction pack provided version of the war planner's desk. Check with the that mod author's page details to figure out how to use those. But for the default war planner's desk, it's called raid board. Now I often use the terms raid and assault interchangeably, but in the gameplay mechanics of Conquer, especially at the code level, assault effectively means a raid run by you, the player. You're going to be running in and attacking somebody else, whereas a raid would generally be talking about something defensive where there's NPCs coming at and trying to take your territory. So that's how I use the two to distinguish themselves. But I know most players consider a raid like any attack involving settlements, and so I tried to use that in there as well. So if you see the start new assault, that just is my vernacular for you are involved in an assault. And in the future, if we ever get to some crazy, the wonderful point that I would love to have in Conquer where you can send assaults without you being there, that would also still be called an assault because you're choosing to make the attack happen. You're the aggressor, basically. It means an assault. So uh, we're going to start with the basics, which is getting an assault up and running. And then we'll do probably an advanced video and I'll show you some of the variables that can show up for assaults because some of you might see a slightly different screen than what I'm going to show you ahead here. So if that happens, definitely jump to the uh, advanced video as well so you learn what is going on there. So the first thing you'll do is you're going to want to make sure that you have some locations scouted out. Now, I might get the scout perk pop up here. Um, now, depending on what patch you're playing on, you will get this scout perk at different times. But if you don't have the scout perk yet, you are going to want to just get close to a settlement. So you discover it and then it will be a viable target. Any settlements that you control by other factions or by no factions are also going to be viable targets. So if you see here, no targets available, that means you don't have anything scouted out either by the scouting perk, which is explained when you get it, or by walking in, discovering the location, or just having it controlled altogether. So once you hit start new assault, oh, and the other way you might not get start new assault here is if you don't have at least five people. Any assault requires at least five attackers. So we're gonna hit start new assault here, and then you get this option. Now, if you're not familiar with the difference between outposts and vassals, check out that video explaining the differences, but I'm gonna go over the way an outpost and vassal assault will play out and especially this last one outpost and take captives so if you establish depending on what you choose here the rules of engagement will change and the other thing that changes the rules of engagement is whether you're playing as a conqueror or liberator now i'm kind of cover cover the conqueror and liberator differences in depth in another video but i will go over the very basics of it here um, if you're establishing an outpost as a conqueror you're effectively going to murder everyone at that place and take it over as a place for your soldiers to live. There is an exception in general in all systems that anytime someone would be, would be killed, if they're a unique NPC, such as a companion or some sort of named special settler, they are spared. They're always left as uh, civilians at the end of a, of combat. And we'll discuss what civilians are in uh, the, the soldier roles video, where we'll talk about all the different roles that an NPC can take, but that won't be coming out for a little bit. So it might not be available yet at the time you're watching this, but if it is, it'll be further down the playlist. And uh, unique NPCs are spared, but generally an outpost as a conqueror, you're murdering everyone. If you do it as a liberator, you will just be murdering all of the guards, so the defending faction NPCs, and you will be liberating the local settlement population, the civilians or settlers. You'll be liberating them so that uh, they will just join your cause, but they will still be civilians. And again, you'll need to watch the role video to understand, but uh, that is how that will play out. So conqueror, you're murdering everyone. Liberator, you're just murdering the uh, the bad guys effectively. With the vassal, you are, if you're a conqueror, you are going to murder all of the guards, but leave the civilians alive so that they can become uh, your source of 
your source of wealth production. They're going to be uh, put under the boot and uh, be forced to provide for you if you're a conqueror. If you are a liberator, instead it plays out very similar to an outpost in that you are killing off the guards of the enemy faction and freeing the local civilian population so that they can basically provide your army with resources. So these two play out very similar for Liberator. The difference with an Outpost and Vassal then for Liberators just becomes the, the way the mechanics of Outposts and Vassals work. And you might end up wanting to send away some of the civilians from your Outpost just because they can have a detriment on an Outpost, which again, we'll cover that more in the role video. But uh, for Liberators, they play out very similarly. For, for Conquerors, uh, they play out very differently. The last type, established outposts and take captives. If you're still trying to make an outpost, but the difference is, is that rather than murder everyone, all of these civilians or settlement population will be made captives. And for uh, different factions, that can mean different things. So, for example, the raiders will actually put slave collars on them, and some of the other faction packs may have done something different. Perhaps they just put them in a different outfit. But the captives have different rules. Again, this is something that makes more sense in the role video, and there can be benefits and negatives to taking captives. So it is a risk reward system and for liberators this can sometimes be very unimmersive to do this it would be very awkward for you to go in and effectively enslave a population so generally you'll want to be careful when you're using this with liberators there is a an exception to where this would make a lot of sense to use as liberators where you could say you're taking prisoners of war as opposed to slaves and that would be if you used the war options system which is one of the startup systems available in conqueror if you used that to pre-take over a lot of the settlements with various factions some of the faction packs are defined to not use civilians at all so all of the people that move into their settlement in fact it appears to me that this rust devils faction pack we're playing with here uh is one of those that it uh it actually has NPCs that belong to the faction, but they're not combatants. So then maybe you'd take those as prisoners of war as a liberator, and it would still feel correct because they're actually members of the faction as opposed to just being helpless settlers, which would be, you know, very lore un unfriendly for something like the Minutemen to go in and take captives of that of settlers. So just be aware of that. If you're playing with the war options turned on, you probably are going to want to do some heavy scouting of a settlement to kind of get a feel for who's actually there before you choose this option here. But uh, generally, you're just choosing the option based on what you want that settlement you're conquering uh, or uh, liberating to do for your empire, because that's the type it's going to become as soon as you finish the combat. So we're going to hit Establish Outpost here, and you might get this. You might get the scout targets. In a future patch, we are going to be moving the getting the scout thing as soon as you just click on the raid board, as opposed to waiting for you to establish a target. Because one of the issues that came up in uh, various reports is that sometimes uh, you don't have your first target yet, and then you don't get access to scout until you go find a second settlement, which... There's, you know, so if you're for some reason you're in a patch where that's not the case, just go scout out a second settlement manually by discovering it, and then you'll get access to this. So then you'll get a list of the settlements that are eligible. Now, occasionally, mods, or in this case, a creation club, are set up incorrectly with their settlements. They have set up weird keywords on them or set them up in a way that uh, they are not... They are not registering correctly with the Conqueror system. So for this, I believe this is from the VR Workshops Creation Club content, and there are several mods that have this problem too. You might get targets that don't make any sense that you've yet to discover, and that is just misconfiguration by those particular things. Those could be patched, and maybe that's something we'll release in the future. But for now, we're going to choose the one we know about, Red Rocket Truck Stop, and you'll get a confirmation to attack the settlement. And then you will be given a menu. Now, this is the point where if you get something different than this, watch the next video as well, the Advanced... Uh, the advanced assaults video, which will explain the other types of menus that might come up that very, they generally will come up a little bit later in your Conqueror playthrough. Um, sometimes they can happen on as soon as your second assault, uh, depending on how things went. But for us, we're on this fresh one. You will get a, a an option here of numbers five through 15, depending on how many you have. In my current outpost or my current uh, empire right now, I only have five soldiers available that are set to the warrior role. So that's all that's coming up here. So if you have, you don't have five or you don't have as many as you expect, you might need to change the roles from uh, the other type to warriors, which you'll be able to learn about in a future video uh, based on uh, the soldier roles. And um, 
The uh, other reason you might not see a high number here is if you just don't have that many people in your army yet. So you might need to do some more recruitment before uh, the number you expect to show up is there. Now this does count all of your soldiers across all of your outposts. So you don't have to be running in the outposts that your soldiers are. It will pull them from wherever they're available so that uh, you don't have to always run back to particular outposts. Though there are other benefits from attacking from specific outposts, which we'll cover in the future. So once you're happy with the number of attackers, you just push that button and it'll say in the upper in the corner, gathering your forces for an attack and then you will be followed up with this assault quest that will show up and tell you where to go so if we go to here under data and hit uh, join the assault it will show us where our soldiers are sitting there waiting for us now there's a couple of things i want to talk about before we go meet up with them and i show you what happens next first up is that if you happen to be standing next to your workbench you will get the very unimmersive uh, thing happening which is all your soldiers will start teleporting right in front of the workbench here that is a uh, necessary evil so in order to handle a lot of the mechanics Conqueror does in the background, things like our armory system and our uh, mess hall buff system, both of which we'll talk about in a future video, they uh, require that the NPC be loaded close by you in memory at the time. So to do that, we teleport them all over there just long enough to pull that stuff off. Uh, so if you don't want to ever have to witness that, just make sure your your Warplaner's desk is far from your workbench so you don't have to witness the uh, unimmersion of that. The other thing to, to note about that is that for some of you, it won't happen as quickly as it just did for me. There might be a long delay before this quest appears. That is especially the case on Xbox. It requires quite a bit of processing power to handle all of the number crunching and moving people around and checking for special buildings. All of that can take a little bit of time in the background. So if it doesn't seem to be responding and you didn't get a message that the assault was canceled or it failed to run, you should just wait a little bit longer. Now, if you find yourself waiting minutes, then there's likely something wrong and you might want to try running another assault by activating the raid board once again. And it will tell you if the assault is still in progress in uh, to set up. It'll tell you something like there's another one in progress, uh, wait for that to complete or whatever. Now, if you need to abandon a raid, so for some reason, if you decided that uh, you, you made a mistake about your target or you didn't bring enough people or something else happened, happened if you wait 24 hours the raid will cancel itself so there are two ways you can start in an actual stall one is you can just go in by yourself and rambo it and your squad will join you um, I guess a third way would be that you could uh, stealth your way in and start sniping down some targets. But as soon as you engage in combat with any of the enemy combatants at the settlement you're attacking, your squad will come running up and join combat. Now, if you want to be a little more cautious with it and recognize the fact that the AI in this game can be uh, awful, <laughs> uh, if you run up to them first they will start following you and then you can guide them through to a good attack point. And this is especially useful if you use the pre-build system where there's a lot of stuff built at these settlements because uh, once you get once you get to those settlements, they might have a lot of walls or turrets in the way where you wouldn't want your guys to run right in and they might do that if you let the AI decide the full pathing. So uh, walking up to them here, will uh, have them, as soon as you get real close to them, they will join you and you'll get an assault change. But I wanna talk about a couple of other things over here before we do this. So. Uh, first up is that your guys are mortal during this, so they can be killed. There are ways around this, which we'll talk about in the future, but uh, in general, it's a balanced mechanic to make them mortal. So you actually have to care about uh, whether they survive or not, because if even if you kill everybody at the opposing settlement, if your whole squad dies, you still lose the assault and you will not claim it for your faction. So keep that in mind is that you gotta protect your guys. The other thing that uh, of note here is that the NPCs that are there are not necessarily the ones you saw when you scouted. There will be that will still be that faction, but there might be more. And if there was no one there, NPCs will be spawned there after the fact. So uh, additional NPCs will show up as you go. Now, the way it chooses the NPCs that will show up are based on the faction packs you have installed. And uh, it generally, I, I can't recall how we have, I think we, excuse me, have it set up right now that any, any faction can be chosen as an enemy. Oh, pardon me. Even if they're not unlocked yet, that might be one of those things we change in the future or it might be vice versa. But I believe the faction in front of me is one from Franktown versus Ronton, which I haven't unlocked. So I'm guessing that I was correct that it is any of the factions can be made your enemy, even though you couldn't use them necessarily yourself until unlocking them. So it spawns some number of NPCs as guards. Now, if you use the war options to precede the settlements with different factions in control, it will not spawn additional guards unless the settlement had less than was expected for your particular uh, your particular 
defender. So the way the number of defenders is chosen is based on a calculation based on how strong your empire is, based on the reputation. The idea here is when you make assaults, they know you're coming and they are hiring or buffer, bringing up defenders. This is my, my lore immersion explanation of why this happens, but in reality, it's just a balance thing. Uh, we want to make sure that you have a reasonable fight every time. So the stronger your empire, so that would be the, uh, the more settlements you control, the more defenders you will find at each place you assault. So early on in the game, you can get away with bringing less guys when you don't have a ton uh, because you don't have a lot of territory. So you're going to be fighting against less guys. So you, you can get away with smaller armies. And then as you get further and further along, you're going to want to make sure you're bringing bigger and bigger armies with you to actually survive and win against these assaults. So the bigger your territory, the more defenders you can expect. So I'm going to demonstrate this real quick here. We'll uh, go ahead and join our assault. You can see it now says wipe out red rocket truck stop. So now we'll head over there and if you had chosen vassal instead of a wipeout it would say subdue um, and now the uh, depending on the faction they may or may not already be hostile until you attack them uh, but we're gonna go ahead and I'm on God mode right now but uh, at least I think I am no maybe I'm not I better uh, put myself in God mode so that uh, we don't lose here um, just because I just want to demonstrate this in fact I'm gonna just cheat this and do kill all hostiles um, but uh, warning this is something if you are using cheat commands like I just did if you use kill all hostiles before you go tag your guys, there's a bug in the way the game works, and I have no idea uh, how to resolve this. It's been a uh, bug since the mod launch, but there's a brief period where when you use your um, bats, you will see that your guys are enemies when they're standing over there waiting for you to join them. Even though they're friendly to you, they will show up. And what happens is that kill all command, the KAH, kill all hostiles, that actually uses the same logic as VATS does. So even though they're actually friendly to you, they're considered hostile to the game engine, and so it would kill them. So be careful about using that KAH until you've actually gone up and tagged in your soldiers. Just like our assault when we set down the, or just like our converting to an outpost when we set down the war planner's desk, after an assault, the flag will be placed to tell you that the conversion completed. With vassals, it's a little bit differently. We'll talk about that in a second. But you can scrap this flag if you want. You're not required to have it. The next thing that will happen is all of your surviving soldiers will move in. So anybody who came with you on the raid will move into it if it was an outpost type. If it was a vassal instead, a couple of things will happen differently. First up, the uh, you would still be killing the guard NPCs that were spawned, whatever faction was sent to guard, but all of the civilian types, so any of the settlers or civilians or anything that's flagged as as a non-combatant, they will if they will either flee from combat or cower, or they might join in combat. Again, it depends on there's various things that can control these rules, but any of them that are meant to survive and be subdued, they will just go into that kind of injured position where they're sitting on the ground ground and once they all stand up you'll know that the conversion has completed and they shouldn't be hostile to you any longer if you find that they are hostile after they stand back up definitely report that as an issue that has been an issue in past versions of conqueror but as of the time of this recording that issue has been fully resolved with patch 4.2.2 so if you find that please report that as a bug to me i would love to get that resolved um, so once they all stand up you'll know that that is complete now rather than all of your soldiers that attacked moving in only enough will move in to occupy any Anything that was guard post like so whether it be a vanilla guard post and I'll go ahead and show you what those look like so anything that was flagged as a guard object that could have an NPC manning it for example these types of things uh, any of those or any martial plots the local population that was assigned there will be unassigned and instead your faction will take over those locations instead they will also move in to that settlement and occupy for example the beds there so they will kind of become live in protectors or if you're a liberator or uh, kind of guards if you are a uh, conqueror so that should cover the basics of assaults there's still a lot more depth to this to cover so if you're interested in that if you want to see more about the assault system check out the next video um, uh, the advanced assaults video